Okay, here's an alternative to uh, the uh, the old Pat's rubber leg, um, which can get uh, a little overfished. And uh, this is a, an older pattern. I've been kind of on a, on a string of some older flies, uh, just trying to uh, show some of these older techniques. And, uh, you know, really the idea is uh, maybe not even so much that you tie these exact patterns, but you kind of uh, expand your repertoire of techniques. So um, with that, I'm going to show you this fly called a halfback. Um, and this is a stonefly nymph um, pattern, and uh, tied with just a few materials, hackle, peacock curl, and pheasant tail. Um, and so we're going to weight it, so we'll put some lead wire on there. Of course, you can tie it with a bead head if you want, um, but in our case, we're going we're gonna to tie a non-beaded version. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, um, I've got a size 6 here. You can tie these down to a 14, um, but a 5262, a 2x long nymph hook. Uh, TMCO 5262, and I've got some 30 thousandths lead wire, and I'm going to weight this um, from about the hook point forward, and I don't really count those wraps, I just sort of gauge where they start and stop. I want to be a few eye lengths back from the hook eye and just about at the hook point here on the back end, and I'll break those ends off and kind of smooth them down. Just use my thumbnail to do that. And then I've got some, in the case of this big one, some 6 aught uni um, in black. And I'm going to start this thread just here behind the eye. And I'll cross hatch over that lead to the back. Then I can cut my tag end off. And I'll come forward again. And I just want to sort of smooth that off a bit. I don't really need to cover it, but just smooth it a bit. Now for the tail on this, I'm going to use... Um, this is just ringneck pheasant tail, and I'm going to take, uh, on a big fly like this, I'm going to take a big clump, um, you know, I don't know, 40 fibers or so, and I'm going to pull them out so that their tips become even, and peel those off, like so. Um, I'm going to go about a half shank long for the tail. So I'll tie this in at the bend, and I like to wrap forward over those butt ends all the way up over the lead and then off the front end. Um, and that just sort of smooths the underbody out and makes the, the rest of the fly a little easier. Then I'll bring my thread back again. I'm going to leave it laying on top of the lead. You can see just a short little stub tail there. And then I'm going to take another clump, <clears throat> excuse me, of about, you know, probably the same size, about 40 pheasant tail fibers. And in this case, I want to tie it in by the tip ends. So my thread's you know, somewhere about the middle of the hook. I'm going to catch those tips, and I'm going to wrap back over them. This is going to become a shell back. So I'm going to wrap back over these to the base of the tail and leave these hanging back here at the back end. Then I'll find myself a nice saddle feather. And um, I like to use rooster saddle for these. Um, this is a... a this is actually a speckled badger dyed brown Hebert feather. Um, and I want a feather that, you know, is at least as wide as the gap of the hook. And I'm going to tie this in by its butt end, strip some bare stem here. I'm going to tie it in back here at the bend of the hook. And now I'm going to come in with a little bit of peacock curl. So um, on a big fly like this, you want some fairly long peacock curl um, or a bigger bundle if you've got shorter peacock curl. Um, I'm going to try to even these up a bit. So I've probably got, oh, 12 or 15 of them here. And I'm going to tie these in at about the 75% point. I'll wrap back over them to the base of the tail as well. Bring my thread forward again. <clears throat> now this is a good spot to, just because we've got a lot of things tied down there, let's put a little head cement on there. This is just some flex seal. Um, that just anchors that tie down a little more nicely. So now I'm going to take my peacock curl, and you kind of have to, rock it back and forth a little bit to get everything aligned but we're going to build our abdomen and we want a, a fairly chunky you know keep in mind this is a stonefly pattern fairly chunky abdomen on this fly up to about that 75 percent point and then we'll tie it off 
trim those butt ends out. Got kind of a weird one up there, that's all right. See this little loose guy right here? He's actually tight on both ends. Let's get him out of there. Just had some slack in him. Now one thing I do to toughen this up a bit is I'll take my thread and just cross hatch back over the abdomen and then forward again. That doesn't really show on the finished fly, you can see. That's not going to show much, but that does toughen up that peacock curl a bit. Then I'm going to pick up my hackle feather and I'm going to palmer it just evenly spaced turns through the abdomen. and tie it off at the front end. So you can see this is a fairly bristly fly. Now I'm going to trim that feather off, but save that. We're going to use that again here in a minute. So now I'm going to take my pheasant tail and I'm going to pull it forward over the top. So that's going to form the shell back. And you can kind of rock it back and forth to get it to lay flat in and amongst that hackle. And then I'll anchor it down to just behind the index point. I can trim those butt ends out. Now I'll take that feather again and strip a bit of bare stem and I'll tie this in up here at the front end and I like to kind of sweep this hackle back and make sure that I don't have any gap between the you know what what was the abdomen and what's about to become the thorax here and I'll grab another little bundle now you don't need quite as much here because we're not traveling um, traveling as far so you don't need as much peacock curl on the thorax as you did on the abdomen and I've probably got one, two, three, four, five, I've got seven. So I'll say six or eight of these. And I'll tie that down by the tip end. And anchor that in place. And then bring my thread right up to my index point. Um, and again, just kind of keeping consistent here. We'll put a little shot of head cement down there. That just toughens that peacock a bit. And I'll pick up this peacock curl. And I'm going to start to wrap it just forward over that thread base. And I'll tie it off just behind the eye and trim those butt ends out of there. Make just a few turns to kind of smooth that head off. And then again, just cross hatch that thread through that peacock back and forth. Just toughen them up a little bit. And then I'll pick up my brown feather and I'm going to continue that same palmer forward through the thorax. And a nice evenly spaced turns. Time off just up here behind the eye. Kind of sweep everything back and I'll just build a clean little thread head there. And whip finish. Nick that thread out. Flatten our shell back out a little bit. You can see the pretty impressionistic little bug, you know, little legs all over everywhere. Put a little shot of head cement on him here. But a pretty generic bug. You know, a lot of the old time patterns were, uh, were pretty generic. Um, and a lot of them involved peacock curl, um, which has got, you know, so many different colors in it and sort of reflects things. Uh, unlike any other material these days, um, but a pretty bushy little pattern. One of the cool things about this is uh, um, you can fish this fly as a stonefly nymph in a river, um, but it also makes a pretty good dragonfly nymph in a lake. Um, this one's tied fairly heavy. I went pretty heavy with the hackle on there. You could go, um, you know, a fair bit sparser and still kind of have the same bug, just depending on what you were looking for. Um, you know, the whole idea is that this fly kind of tumbles down and just gives the impression. Um, you know, I can see where adding a couple of rubber legs in on something like this um, you know, might add a little something something to it. Uh, maybe just here right at the front of the abdomen. Uh, just X a set of those in. Maybe we'll save that for another tutorial. But um, that is the regular old school halfback. Um, I hope you like that one. You should probably maybe twist a few of those up just in case. Um, there you go. I'm Charlie Craven. Thanks for watching.